Action Review Despite a passionate Jonathan Majors, this Korean War epic seldom takes flight. Based on the true story of the U.S. Navy's first black aviator, the film will land on a number of IMAX screens when it bows November 23rd. If you believe the marketing, then devotion, an inspirational aerial combat epic set during the Korean War, would like very much to be thought of as Top Gun. Corsair Strip away the IMAX scope, the booming score and the flyboy swagger, however, and all that remains is a hollow shell of bland, beaten-down war movie tropes that leave Jonathan Majors to effectively fend for himself with his deeply rooted lead portrayal of the first black aviator in Navy history. Devotion. Based on the book of the same name by Adam Makos, which described the friendship between Majors Jesse Brown and his fellow wingman, Tom Hudner, played by Glenn Powell, the story has been brought to the screen by director J.D. Dillard, himself the son of only the second African-American member of the U.S. Navy's Blue Angel Squadron, with a great deal of respect but insufficient dramatic depth. Five years have passed since the end of World War II, and, this being 1950, Ensign Brown's presence in the U.S. Navy's basic flight training program doesn't exactly go unnoticed, he constantly finds himself brushing off both pointed and casually racist remarks from his fellow officers. When he first meets up with Hudner, a straight arrow new recruit, Brown proceeds to form a respectful if cautiously arms-length friendship with the Annapolis graduate. A man who contends he's never met a plane he couldn't land, Brown begins to doubt his claim when he first climbs into a VOD F4U Corsair, which has earned the ominous nickname Widowmaker due in part to its long nose, which obscured visibility, and a tendency to bounce uncontrollably on landing. But soon Brown and Hudner learn to tame the gull-winged aircraft and are assigned to fight Squadron 32 aboard the USS Leyte prior to the outbreak of the Korean War. In adapting the Mako's novel, screenwriters Jay Crane and Jonathan A. H. Stewart seem to be content to trot out the usual war picture platitudes with stiff dialogue that has all the personality of an instruction manual. Meanwhile, director Dillard favors drawn-out dramatic pauses that keep getting in the way of crucial tension or momentum. Even a sequence during a leave in Cannes, when a chance beach encounter with Elizabeth Taylor, Sorinda Swan, results in an invitation to party with her at a casino, ends up feeling lifeless and needlessly protracted. Despite those considerable obstacles in his path, Majors, whose recent credits include Lovecraft Country and The Harder They Fall, invests a tremendous amount of emotional conviction in his character, whether he's playfully engaging at home with his devoted wife, Daisy, Christina Jackson, or castigating his reflection in a mirror, painfully reciting every hurtful-slash-racist thing that was ever directed at him. Powell, who also appeared in Top Gun. Maverick, isn't given as much to work with, his character is a virtual cipher by comparison, with little in the way of backstory. And only really finds a semblance of purpose when he must come to the rescue of his injured partner. In the absence of fuller character development, their fellow flyers, including those played by Joe Jonas and Nick Hargrove, have even less opportunity to make an impression. Fortunately, cinematographer Eric Messerschmidt, Mank, manages to liven things up with those IMAX were the aerial visuals, which really didn't require chanted dances over modulated music cues to kick in at the slightest provocation, even in the absence of a Lady Gaga on the soundtrack. Follow along for live updates in real time.